Hey there, friends. Coming at you with another episode of the Pre-Ride Show here at Belgian Waffle Ride, California. Matt Beer's joining us. Appreciate you, brother. How are you, how you feeling? Yeah, thank you. It's, um, it's pretty wild to be here. Um, long travel, and it's kind of unreal. <laughs> I'm detecting a non-American accent. So, brother, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what brings you here to Belgian Waffle Ride, California. Yeah, so um, I'm Matt Beers. I'm from South Africa, um, Cape Town. And um, yeah, I've been following the gravel scene for pretty much from 2019 and um, I was like man I need to get over here sometime and um, luckily all the sponsors and opportunities came about and uh, now I'm standing here. Have you been racing much here in the States already this year or did you just come up from South Africa recently? Yeah I just flew in on Tuesday Okay. Um, so yeah just acclimatizing and um, enjoying the, all the new things happening. What do you know, what have you heard about Belgian Waffle Ride? What, what, uh, how does this make it all the way down to South Africa and make you want to come up here? I mean, we have a, quite a big gravel scene growing there. Um, we have a lot of guys that just love the gravel and we have, we have beautiful roads and everything out there. And um, we have a, you guys have a pretty big following nice. over there. Um, and yeah, we all know the events here in the US and um, it's just a matter of getting here. That's the question. And um, this was the first one I wanted to tick on my on my bucket list and um, yeah, that's why I wanted to be here. Uh, what's the rest of the season look like for you? What other events are you going to do? Are you, you going to be here a while or are you heading back yeah, soon? Yeah, I'm here a month. Good. So I'll do Gravel Locos okay. and then I'll do Rule of Three and then I go back home okay. after that. Um, what's your training been like? What sort of big block have you been putting in to come into a, an event like this? Um, I mean, Cape Epic was okay. kind of my big block of yeah, training. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll get some miles in the legs and um, yeah just been working on some more steady top end endurance like after the epic but it's it's a fine line obviously that race that race hurts you so you got to just be careful yeah um, let's break down the bike I see this beautiful specialized machine you're a tall guy so there's yeah, yeah. a six, 61 <laughs> notation here um, but break it down for us this is the crux right yeah this is the S-Wish crux um, it was a real struggle to get this bike because of the stock. Bikes are kind of hard to get these days, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm very, very happy I was able to get this. And um, yeah, it's... Why the Crux for you? What, 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 what do you like about it? Um, I had the Diverge last year, but huh? the Crux is obviously a little bit more, it's a cycle cross bike, but it's just a more racier, lighter, okay. a little bit, yeah, just, uh, I think it'll be a little bit better suited for these type of races for sure. Okay, I see the SRAM one by setup. Walk us through that. Why one yeah. by? What's the, what's the the rationale behind that choice? I mean, I just from the mountain bike, I know the one by system, and I don't I don't know when last I actually had a rear derail. I mean, a front derail. <laughs> <laughs> so tear it off and never never yeah, be seen I'm, again. So I just it was a natural progression to to build it over to this, and um, yeah, really enjoying the explore range that they've brought out. Let's talk about that range. What's on the front, what's on the back? So I have a 46 on the front and then a 10 to 44 wow, on the rear. Wow, okay, almost one to one there. Yeah, so okay. it's um, it's really nice and the jumps are a lot closer than the, the XX1 cassette. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I see this new beautiful 3D printed saddle. Um, yeah. We've seen red and, and, and heard a lot about this. This is the first one we've seen in the wild. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the SRX Roman EVO Mimic, and um, I mean, not Mimic, sorry, 3D print, and yeah, it's a, it's an amazing piece of kit. looks like it. It looks yeah. like a, a piece of art. You know, like you'd see it, it in a display somewhere. Exactly. Um, I said to the, the factory team when I won Epic, I was like, if I win Epic, can I get one of them? And then... I managed to do that. So that's a heck of a reward. This is my reward. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, probably well worth it too. But yeah, it's a, it's a, an amazing. You just have to ride it to actually really feel. Yeah, yeah. How how good it is. Um, let's talk about the tire choice. Obviously, been mm. out doing a little uh, pre riding and checking out the course. Yeah. Uh, this this looks like almost like a slick tire, uh, nice and wide and beefy like that. But what is it and why that choice? Yeah, I mean the tire choice is. Um, I mean, I did as much research via YouTube and the internet as I could, and um, it's really hard to actually figure out what is good, mm -hmm. um, obviously with the, the course changing as well. Um, but yeah, this is a 32 mil Robay Pro. It's pretty, it's got some protection for, you know, if you hit the rim or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's got a little bit of tread, but not much. Um, but yeah, I don't really know, but um, 
it's been feeling fine out there so far. Okay. So. The Roval wheels, another special, a great yeah. specialized brand. Yeah. yeah, the Terras. These yep. are really good. Um, obviously, tubeless and all that. And um, yeah, it's been it's been, been behaving. So good. Yeah, we always like that <laughs> yeah. about our the critical bike parts. Um, you mentioned tubeless. I see some uh, air options here. You're carrying a pump, and you've also got the plug here. Yeah. Um, is that because is that a personal choice? Just don't like carrying anything anything around in the back, and you'd rather have that quick at hand there. Yeah, obviously with six hours of racing, you need to keep these pockets for, for fuel. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't want these type of things in there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I carry the Dyna plug with two options of a, of a small hole or a big hole. And then this will probably be replaced with a CO2. Just okay. for training, I, I have the hand pump in case you're stranded out there somewhere and you, okay. you run out of CO2s. Um, yeah. And that's, I see another personal preference set up here, the angled in uh bar ends like is that that you'd like that enjoy that a more aero advantage yeah i have it on the road bike a little bit of remco even a pole style sure um but but he's half your size yeah he's, he's he comes about size. here yeah. so i'm doing all i can to be as aero <laughs> as possible but okay. um it actually feels quite comfortable with the with the flare and everything so and a computer up front yeah wahoo they're the are you a big I... data guy do you have a, a bunch of pieces of data points on that screen at any one time um i have like normalized TSS, general power, and then kilometers and climbing. Okay. Not, not too much, and then I'll definitely have a map on. Okay. Just to know. Know what's coming. And yeah, just to see the climbs and stuff that's coming. Okay. For sure. Um, based on how well you've done it at, at Cape Epic and all that, how you feeling? You feeling pretty good? Well, any expectations? Any uh, promotions about how well you're going to do tomorrow? <laughs> um, oh, it's so hard to tell. I mean, the Cape Epic is, it's similar, but it's not. You know, right. um, this is a long race. It's obviously six plus hours. So I think it's all about fueling, being also looking after your equipment through the race. Yeah. I mean, that's something that we know from Epic. You, you have to, there's a fine line between panicking and holding on and then also navigating and looking after your equipment. Yeah. So yeah, we're just gonna do all the knowledge I have, just try and transfer it to the gravel and um, Hopefully it pays off tomorrow. So you mentioned the six hour ride and fueling. What's your personal strategy? What do you, what do you go for? Do you have a, a certain snack that you like? Is it a peanut butter sandwich or some crunched up chips inside? Like what's your deal? Um, no, I just sponsor nutrition is my sponsor. And um, yeah, I just use all their products like gels, bars, like gummies that they have. And just try and fuel that like kind of 80 to 90 grams per hour. Okay. And, just try and keep on top of that and you should be all right. As important as it is in a six hour race plus. Exactly. Yeah, I gotta stay on top of it. If you miss one of those, you're gonna be um, seeing a few stars. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're gonna be making other riders feel a few stars uh, as hard as you're gonna go. So appreciate you spending a few time, a few minutes with us, man, and, and great luck tomorrow. No, thank you, thank okay. you for this. Matt Beard's joining us here on this episode of the Pre-Ride Show. Keep an eye out for him, one of our main contenders tomorrow, Belgian Waffle Ride, California. Thanks for looking in.